seduce, lure, obsess, perform, charm. These five words of power are used to describe the Clan of the Rose, Clan Toreador, or do they actually? I am your lore and saviour, and this is the Bloody Guide to Vampire Roleplay. The Toreadors are descendants of Arakel, the Toreador and a Deluvian, debatably the oldest Cainite three times removed from the Biblical Cain, whose outburst of passionate anger and hatred resulted in the vampiric curse that would plague and dominate the world of darkness. Legend has it that Arakel, the founder of the clan, was once a mortal painter and sculptress who lived in the illustrious First City. Renowned far and wide for her stunning artwork, she was embraced into the world of the Cainite and soon to be kindred, and soon after, she painted a mural that depicted the past, present, and future of the vampiric society. As Cain's blossom, Arakel crafted intricate statues for the first city, impressing all who saw her work. However, when Cain foresaw a grim future for his kind, he cursed Arakel with an affliction that still plagues the Toreador today. Her love for art became an all-consuming obsession, distracting her from all else and driving her into a perpetual state of artistic frenzy. But the Toreador that would spawn from her would not be so animalistic, learning to refine and control their pursuits, but also becoming the remnant of the beating heart of the humanity that all the kindred of the Anarchs and Camarilla would soon emulate. It was a Toreador who named the Camarilla, conceptualized the masquerade, and ranked the importance of each clan within the sect, defining how each modern kindred should behave, reshaping the political landscape in their image. If the Ventru are the face of the Camarilla's political power, the Torador are the embodiment of the sect's artistic and cultural influence. They are a clan of vampires who revel in the pleasures of the flesh and the aesthetic beauty of the world around them. Seducers and seduced in equal measure, the Torador use their charms and lure to manipulate the mortal world and lure in their prey. But they are not just manipulators, they are also passionate devotees of the arts, from the grandest works of sculpture and painting to the subtlest nuances of music and dance. Their penchant for beauty and creativity has made them famous and infamous in equal measure. They are the entertainers, the innovators, and the trendsetters of the kindred world. But their reliance on their aesthetic veneer also makes them vulnerable to the harsh realities of the Camarilla's cult politics. For the Toreador, survival is not just a matter of physical strength or cunning, but also of maintaining the facade of civility and grace that the Camarilla prides itself on. They are one of the bastions of the sect, but also one of its most delicate and fragile components, for in a world of darkness, Beauty is both a blessing and a curse. Regardless of their age, kindred emulate their humanity. This is fact and not up for dispute, as there are many instances across many books across various editions stating this. By some accounts, this makes any supernatural creature in the world of darkness an alien. Not an out of space little green man sort of galactic tourist or invader, but more an emotional response. Every vampire that chooses to adhere to the path of humanity, to some degree, operates on the jaded and slowly disintegrating memory of their human experiences and the emotional responses to them as they survive night after night dealing with mortals they have moved with the times and kindred that refuse to adapt. In other words, they work out to try to remember how one should behave and feel in mortal circles. It no longer is natural for them. Such vampires are almost locked in a prison, stuck in their old ways whilst slowly realising that the mortal social norms do not apply to them as they once did. Things like gender, sexuality and law and order are mortal constructs to bind the lessers into place. Why should a vampire have to adhere to these limiting philosophies? The breath of emotional and sensual possibility to explore what it means to truly feel is endless, and the Toreador, to one degree or another, try to redefine 
define what it means to feel and experience emotion and one of the freest ways we can begin to rethink our way is to behave as a toreador might is through interpretation. The hyper focus of an artistic art form is an easy thing for the mortal to understand because of the old saying, beauty is the eye of the beholder. What is one of the person's trash is another person's treasure, which is another simple, hmm, that looks nice, be it Japanese paintings in the 1800s, 21st century vaporwave music, nostalgic memories of Marvel crocheting in the 1990s, the bloody expression of a recent mass murder, or the twists and turns of a contemporary boxing, football, or cheese rolling match, which will cause some form of emotional response, and it is not always clear what the intention of it is. Art is not limited to what you only see, but what you feel and think. There is the texture, the way the image it was projected, what it says about the artist, their resources, the creator's education or lack of thereof. They're just some of the things to fit ponder over, helping you better understand and appreciate the world around you and the world that you're going to invest the next week, month, or even years over. There's also the fact of when they did it, what was going on in their life, their political leaning, and so forth. Nothing is created and expressed in a void. There is a reason for everything. And when it comes to expression, interpretation is just as important, as is the reason as to why you feel about it, or in the case of the Torador, obsess over it, losing yourself in the beauty of creation or destruction. And it doesn't matter how much you feel or live this piece of art. No one will ever understand it because you, they are not you and therefore will never appreciate things as you do. Think for a moment the loneliness that this creates and how it could create an unhealthy sense of longing and a desire to feel as they once did, to be loved and lusted over. Kindred are creatures of extremes, so they give out too much, but they also demand unhealthy amounts of attention in return, which they can amplify with their blood with presence, which is very much their discipline. Every Toradol knows this, and they revel in it. They would never admit, because why would anyone reveal such a flaw to the world? For one thing, the Toradors are not flawed. They are perfect. It is the world around them that is riddled with imperfections, silly. The Toradors do not strive for control like a Venture or Tremere might. Their goals are much simpler and personal. They wish to enjoy the mortal world and play with it. Everything worth the time is now their plaything. Experiencing any emotion to the extreme is unhealthy, yes, but the Torridors are not mentally sound. They are obsessive and easily bored. They expand their energy and excitement in huge bursts, focusing on a movement, subculture, but usually a person gaslighting them into believing they are the diamond in the rough before discarding them like a condom packet on the side of a street. You were yesterday's news, darling. The diva has got their fix and needs something new, fresh, and much stronger to stimulate their urges. They are supernatural junkies. Decide during character creation what your Torador needs to survive. If you are struggling to decide, for the possibilities are seemingly endless, I recommend using my homebrew, the Autarka Storyteller. Whilst it is meant as a solo play tool, there is a section in the character creation chapter that is dedicated to Torador obsessions, in which you can roll some dice to narrow down your Torador's obsessive hobby. As deep as I make the Torador appear to be, they are outwardly shallow creatures. They pursue style over substance. As the Torador, you aim to please the people of today rather than inspire those of tomorrow. You don't need to truly feel the social norms to operate it, you just need to understand how they work on a basic social level. If this sounds contradictory, this is a very basic understanding of a sociopath. This mentality gives the Torador a vital role in the Ke Amarilla they so name. Elysiums are up to date because they are the pulse that keeps the old blood circulating. They don't care for the emotions behind it. They just want to blend in and the Torador provide the gossip bringing in someone down a peg or several in turn. This is all assuming they are the default Camarilla-aligned Torador, but those who defect the Anarch, the so-called abstract Torador, are not so different yet very different at the same time. The Torador's clan contribution to the Anarch movement is often overlooked due to their association with high society and appreciation for beauty. 
However, when Toradors join the ranks of the Anarchists, it's a significant step for them as they cut themselves off from the traditional comforts and restrictions of their clan and sect. As part of the Anarchs, Toradors often act as diplomats and liaisons, using their abilities to plead the Anarchs' case in places where most Anarchs would have difficulty being invited. They can rally support from liberal societies, both kindred and kind, and convey the Anarchs' platform with a grace that the less managed supporters of the cause cannot imagine. Toradors understand that change must occur at all levels of society, so whilst it's important to rally the disenfranchised kindred in the streets, it's equally vital to have representation in the halls of power. They take on this role and ensure that the Anarchs can make concessions without threatening the masquerade and that the Anarch cause can progress in steps rather than massive sweeping unmanageable coups. Although some Anarchs may make fun of the Toridor members, they are aware of their significant contribution to the cause. Toridors take pleasure in this knowledge and sometimes have an air of hauteur about them. However, if the Anarchs ever become so angry that open revolt is the only option, no amount of smooth talking will be enough to prevent action. Within the Anarchs, the Toridor hierarchy remains intact, even though those who belong to the Camarilla still carry significant influence. For Toradors, subsect needs and clan membership are closely intertwined. Despite being part of the Anarch movement, Toradors still receive invitations to attend parties and other social gatherings, but often they're viewed as curious outsiders, much like a foreigner at a formal dinner. Instead of isolating themselves from kindred society, Toradors aim to change the Camarilla from within, which would be impossible if they were to remove themselves from society altogether. While some non-Anarch Toradors snub those who openly declare their Anarch loyalties, others secretly admire them for their bold and controversial expression of their beliefs. The expression or convincing of any opinion or belief is aided supernaturally with presence. To scare, inspire, allure, or rouse is easy to achieve for any Torador who invests in presence. Note the importance of presence in relationship to the Torador. This is not dominate. Breaking the mind and forcing someone's hand does not grant the mind the ability to think for itself. Presence helps with this to heighten emotions and feel new themes. That it makes the targets of this more often than not willing, albeit one that is supernaturally coerced. Celerity may seem as an odd choice for the Torador to possess and is often associated with the more combat heavy clans and if your Torador is say a fencer, boxer or sniper, you're going to need to be quick. It's also perfect for the quickest of backhands and escaping when things get too much. You should also consider Consider the speed in which you can move, how it can help you express paintings, sculptures and the likes in ways no mortal could. Similarly, with all specs, unlocking parts of your six senses that is impossible for most denizens within the world of darkness. The sixth sense here is the mind itself. With telepathy, true premonitions and possession, I needn't say more of what these sensations could do for a Torador other than make a mess on the floor. With this wide range of functions, there are many ways one can bend predator types to fit your kindred concepts, but here is what I would suggest. The most obvious three are Scene Queen, Osiris, and Siren, with each one tapping into more mortally social taboo feelings and expressions, though most of the predator types can be twisted into such a fashion. Grim Reaper from the Player's Guide focuses on the near release of death, whilst Pursuer and Alicat on the Core Book and Player's Guide respectively focus on more intense emotions like fear and anger. The strong focus on emotions and expressions would be a good time to mention that this would be one of the few occasions I would recommend exploring blood resonances. Perhaps not mechanically, but exploring the different emotional states of the vessel slash victim, how it affects the kindred in question, as well as the aftermath from the mortal's perspective. Consensualist is also recommended to the Torator, who likes upholding the facade that mortals who interact with you have free will. There are many lore sheets you can assign to your character, but here are some of the ones I fit well with tonight's clan. With the exception of unusual emotions or expressions and experiences that only a kindred could possibly feel, any of the cults in V5 would make for an interesting fit, particularly the Bahari in the core book and the Cultivators from Chicago by Night. 
The Toroidors have always been a high clan which may be something you may wish to explore in your games, particularly in a Camarilla setting. Also from the core book is the only Toroidor only lore sheet as of the writing and recording of this script, which is the Descendant of Helena lore sheet, though technically speaking so is Child of the Angel Michael from Cult of the Blood Gods, but that doesn't give you a pop up club to play with. If an incarnation of the Succubus Club isn't your cup of joe, perhaps the Asylum with the Jeanette Therese Vorman law sheet also from the core book, the Blue Velvet or the Painted Lady law sheets from Chicago by Night. Abstract Toridors may wish to employ the Anarch Revolt law sheet from Anarch to inspire their fellow Anarchs into battle. If you are the only person who likes the Boston by Night sourcebook and running your VTM games in Boston, the Boston Camarilla law sheet may offer you some entertainment. More flippant Toridors doors embraced within the last 10 years or so may benefit from the kindred social media influencer making all the hashtag totes poggers content for their fans. Finally, and certainly least, if you wish to become a daughter of Cacophony, you can bend the stories of the daughter's lore sheet from the World of Darkness site, but prepare to be greatly disappointed. There are many ways one can build a character. Some of them are wrong, but most of them are right. Ultimately, it should be the narrative that drives the stats, powers and mechanics that work with and against them. These are just my takes and mine alone. How would you build a character belonging to this vampire clan? What wouldn't you do? What would you add to shake things up and make that concept just a little bit spicy? Let me know in the comments below. To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night VTM Instagram and Blue Sky pages to find out when we upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell. <laughs>